Welcome back to our Inventor Series once again. Now, we've made our parts. Now what we got to do is get them put on a drawing sheet. So let's show you how to do that. For starters, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select an IDW. And I'm just going to go OK. And I'm in my default setup, so it's just going to standardize out to an ANSI setup. Um, now it's going to start up and it's going to go to a C size sheet. So the first thing we're going to have to do is drop it to a B size sheet, which is what we want to draw on. And from there, we can then start adding additional sheets. Now, like I said, if you look at our sheet size that pops up here, it is a C size and even states it is such there. So if I go right here to my sheet and right click on it and I go to edit my sheet, I can change that easy enough by simply click selecting from the pull down right here, B size, landscape, lower left, or excuse me, lower right corner for our title block, hit OK. There it goes, all done. Now, when we do this, now we got to put all of our other sheets in. To create additional sheets, there's a couple ways to do it. Now, the easiest way to do it, I'm going to minimize this up on our design tree here, our browser here. I'm just going to right click and tell it to do a new sheet. And it's going to default, and the new sheet's going to look just like the old sheet. In fact, you won't be able to tell the difference as I highlight them back and forth. Alright, so let's make a couple more sheets. In this case, I'm going to need a grand total of seven sheets. So, I'm going to make all seven in one go. They're all made. They're all set up the same. Um, so now all I, had, all I need to do is start my first sheet. So let's go to sheet number one right here. Alright. If I look down here, I'm on sheet number one of seven. I'm going to drop in a base view. Uh, here's how we put in our views. We select our parts. I'm going to go right click, and or just click right on this folder, select from it, and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, okay, what's my assembly here? Well, there's my wheel assembly. That's what I actually want. So I'm going to just go, okay, open. Yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. It's telling me this is made in a non-educational version. Now, it previews it. I'm looking right there. I want the actual front view, or I want an isometric view of this. So if I go here, and let's go to the isometric top right. Now, that's not what I want to see. Top left, no. Bottom right, no. Bottom left, no. So I'm going to have to kind of sneak this by. So I'm going to go to my back. There's the bottom view of it. Okay, so I'm going to just click that guy and drop him off right there. I'm placing the view in here. Now, if I drag off of this, I can create additional views. A right side or a left side. Now, the top and bottom are only relative as I set that up. But in this case, I'm going to drag up here to my right and up diagonally, and I'm going to place this view. Now, I'm going to right click and tell it to create. That's the view I actually want. I don't want this one. So, I can actually delete this and clean out. So, I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to go click on it, hit my delete button. On my keyboard, and do you want to delete view one? Okay. Now, because this is an isometric, it's independent of that base view. If it was not an isometric, it would not be independent. We'll show you that later. So there's my base view. So on my following sheets, say I go to sheet number two, I want to drop in my exploded view. So I have to come in here. I have to come and find my IPN file of it. Which hmm, do I have it here? It's here somewhere. We have to go find it. Probably in my old version or it's up a level from me. There's my caster assembly and there's the one I want right there so I go OK or caster exploded. Now I want this in caster assembly version 1 and yes and yes and yes and yes and there he is. Now side view, don't want that one. Um, let's go isometric top right, that's the one I actually want. I go OK. There he is. He's dropped right in there. Now I can add additional views if I want. I don't want to, I'm done. Now again, I can drag my view around and place it so it sits better on my screen, so I can see all the parts, etc. That's good. Now I have turned off the center lines when I created this, okay? But that's all I do. Now to create the rest of my views, I do the same thing. I simply go in. We're only going to show you the first one here. We're going to show you the caster support wheel um, because it's actually the one that's probably the easiest to do. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to say no, not axle, not bushing, nameplate. Caster plate, support plate, there he is, caster support. Open. Yes. Now, there's my front view. Does that show the most detail? That's how I'm going to decide what my front view is. So in this case, I believe it does show the most detail. I'm going to click right there and drop it in. Now, if I drag out to the right again and up to the top again, I can drop those off and I'm going to put an isometric up here to the upper right. Right click, create. Now, I just created first angle projections of it. Now watch what happens if I drag this base view. Notice what's happening with my right side and my top view. They're moving but staying locked relative to that base view, so everything still lines up. So I want to make sure this is a good drawing, it's got everything it needs in it, I've got the right amount of space between my pieces, and right now I'm just eyeballing it, but I'm just going to drop it in there like that. Now, one thing that is entertaining is I can change the scale on these views. 
but if I change the scale on this view, it's going to change the scale on this view. So my front and my right side, or my front and my top, or my front and my left, or my front and my bottom, or my front and the rear, all those views have to agree. The isometric, on the other hand, does not. In fact, I'm going to go in here to edit this view, and I'm going to change it from being a 1 to 1 scale to being a 2 to 1 scale. See how much bigger it is now? It doesn't even fit on my drawing sheet, so that's a problem. So let's go edit it the other way. Let's go to the other extreme. I'm going to go, instead of a one, 2 to 1, I'm going to go a 1 to 2, or a half size. Now see how big he is in relationship to the rest of them? Tiny. All right, but we can do all that, no problem. We can change our view sizes right there. We can change them as we need it. Um, if I need a blow up of something, I can do that too. I'm going to go back to my 1 to 1, just because it looks best. I'm going to go OK, and there he is, and I'm going to orient him. Now, I'm going to put the rest of them in. And then when we come back around, we're going to show you how to start dimensioning things, okay? And we're going to show you how to put callouts and bill of materials and things on it. And we'll do all, do all that stuff in a sheet coming up in a few minutes. Thanks for your time. Good night.